quick disclaimer before we start the video. I would like to point out that at the point of recording this, I have already finished the game, which is why you might see that I have three resurrection bars instead of just two. You'll unlock it as you progress further into the game. That's all for now. I hope you enjoy the video. Hi, Taka Miyazaki is at it again with yet another miraculous game. This time, it's more story driven, and in my opinion, it's one of his best works yet. The game feels much more different than his previous works, such as Dark Souls or Armored Core. The game is more fast paced and, of course, has more action. You slash your sword, use your tools to aid you in combat, and have an amazing feature, which is the grappling hook. You even have a variety of skills which makes your battles even more awesome. Overall, this gives you a great combat experience. The graphics too are quite the eye catcher, as this is Hidetake Miyazaki's most beautiful work to date, and I expect nothing less from future projects. I think I've rambled on long enough. It's time we actually get into reviewing this game and seeing just what it has to offer. I'll be covering four things about the game. Difficulty, combat, progression, and bosses. Without further ado, let's get into it. First, we'll start with difficulty. Let's just say you'll be seeing this screen more than just twice. These types of games are made to infuriate you. So it is really no surprise that From Software would make this game so difficult to the point where you'd rage quit at least more than 30 times. The further you go up the map, the harder the enemies get. Eventually, they will obtain the same skill set and have more health than they previously do. That's not to say that if you go backwards towards the map, you would also get harder enemies. In fact, they will become much easier, making it a great way to farm money and items. Not to mention, upgrading your tools, increasing your health and attack power, you'll have more time fighting and less time dying. Of course, if you manage to get good and master the combat of the game, the enemies will become less of a challenge to you, and you can easily progress more into the story. Sooner or later, the game won't be as difficult as it was for you in the beginning, and overall, you'll have less time fighting and more time uncovering the story of the game. Next, we'll be talking about combat and what you gain for killing enemies. At the start of the game, you're given a sword and a prosthetic arm. That's it. You don't get to use any more weapons. As I've mentioned before, you can upgrade your tools and your prosthetic arm to make fighting a lot easier. These tools range from kunais, a shield, and a few more tools you can use against your enemies. Upgrading them makes them more powerful. The sword, on the other hand, is not upgradable, and its attack power depends on just how strong your own attack power is. But you can unlock certain skills that give your sword more things to do than just a couple of slashes. You can allow it to drain health from enemies or even attack mid-air with it. So, what do you gain for your hard work? Sen and items. Sen, which is the in-game currency, is used to buy different things. And items can be many things, such as upgrade materials to upgrade your tools and pellets to heal yourself. Pellets aren't the only way you can heal yourself. At the start of the game, you're given something called a healing gourd. You automatically have four of it. As the name implies, you can regain the health you lost after a fight. You can increase the amount of gourds you have by finding things throughout the game called gourd seeds. Be sure not to use this whenever you're under attack, though, or else you won't be gaining any health at all. Now that we're done with the basics, we can finally talk about the really important things. In combat, you'll be fighting with your sword. You're probably wondering though, what about the prosthetic tools? Well, you see, in order to use your tools, you need spirit emblems. They're essentially points that you need in order to use the prosthetic tool. So if you run out, then you can no longer use them, which means you'll mainly be using your sword. So you can attack with your sword, but can you defend with yourself? The answer is yes, but it's complex. It's called posture. The biggest feature of this game that makes it so special is the posture. It replaces your stamina bar when basically any other game. Here's the way it works. You deflect attacks from enemies and that makes the bar increase. The more hits you take, the more the bar increases. 
Once the bar is at its fullest, you are now vulnerable to any hits the enemy sends at you. But don't worry, the same feature applies to enemies, and you can see it right above their head. Everything that applies to you applies to them. Now that we're done with combat, we can talk about progression. Unlike other games, this game only has one objective, and it doesn't change. And I know that you're probably thinking that the same applies to any other game, but let me explain exactly what I mean. In other games, you start with one objective, and your path to that objective is blocked by obstacles, which are other quests or missions. In Sekiro, the obstacles aren't the missions or quests, but rather bosses, and we'll talk about those guys later. So the way you progress is that you have a map, and the further you go up the map, the closer you are to finishing the game. As you progress through it, you get skill points, which you need in order to obtain new skills. And of course, you yourself, as the player, gains experience from playing the game, and that makes it more easy for you to finish the game. Around the map, you'll find sculptures' idols. These are basically the same thing as Dark Souls' bonfires or Bloodborne's lanterns. Through these idols, you can upgrade your skills, get back all your healing gourds, respawn the enemies, and travel to other sculptors' idols you discovered previously. I should probably mention that you can't use these when you're under attack. Now it's time I explain a very important feature of this game, Dragon Rock. As I've mentioned before, you can revive yourself after any death if you want to continue fighting on or you just don't want to lose your money. When you perform a resurrection, you cause something throughout the world of the game called Dragon Rot. Without any spoilers, this basically means the NPCs you've interacted with throughout your gameplay will become sick and will be on the verge of death. Don't worry though, they won't actually die. The effects of Dragon Rot on you means you won't be able to interact with them anymore. The more you die and resurrect yourself, the higher the chance of many people getting dragon rot. No need to panic though, you can cure dragon rot. Using an item called Dragon's Droplet and any sculptor's idol, you can heal dragon rot and now everything is back to normal. That pretty much covers it for the basics of the progression in this game. If I had talked any further, I would be spoiling the game. And I'd rather let you discover the rest for yourself, so that it could be more enjoyable. Now it's time for the most exciting part. The boss. When you heard me say that all you need to do to progress was go up the map, you probably thought... Oh, well then, what made the game so hard then? That's exactly where the bosses come into play. There are many bosses, and they are, well, bosses. We'll start with the minis. Mini bosses don't mean small bosses or useless bosses, but rather weaker bosses that you don't need to kill to progress through the game. And again, that doesn't mean they're useless. They are what will essentially give you items to upgrade your health, and they give you a sense of just what you should prepare for when you fight the real bosses. As for the real bosses though, they are excruciatingly difficult. They're exactly what will make you rage quit and whine about just how weak you are. Killing them will increase your attack power, but that's only if you're able to. Like I said before, if you don't kill them, you don't progress. That's all there really is to fighting bosses. Now enjoy watching me kill the first boss of the game.
Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.